Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. As I'm sure you're very well aware, this year's YouTube Rewind is a hot mess. As of filming this, it is now the most disliked video on the platform. But why? Why is it so bad and why is it hated so much that the entire community has banded together to dislike it? I've got some theories myself. It has something to do with expectations, reality, and the intended audience of the video. But in order to really understand why 2018 YouTube Rewind was so bad, we gotta rewind a bit. Let's see what happened in the past. Why was the past good? Or was it really? Let's dive in. All right, so it's important to note that the first ever YouTube Rewind, if you want to call it that, was just a top 10s video reviewing the top 10 most viral videos of the year. Now that's pretty innocent. I mean, YouTube's known for its top 10 videos, so I guess that fits, but that really sets the narrative for kind of what everyone felt YouTube Rewind was. It's kind of a representation of what was popular on the platform that year. Now, 2012, this is the first year that things begin, whoop, a little increase in production. It's Gangnam Style. This is the year that Gangnam Style exploded onto the scene, was the first video to ever break 1 billion views on YouTube, and it was celebrated. How do we celebrate this? We get loads of different creators from different backgrounds and parody it. That's some, that sounds great. It's like old school YouTube. It felt like a nice community vibe. People you liked watching were there, and they were dressing up in different things and trying to pretend to be in Gangnam Style. It was fun. Now, Gangnam Style could have gotten famous from the radio, TV, Reddit, any of those things, but it didn't. It got big because of YouTube, the platform that it was originally uploaded on. This YouTube video was so weird and crazy and exciting that it just blew up. Everyone had to share it. It was a crazy viral video. And that's why it was okay to celebrate this thing. It felt like it was something from us for us. And that's what it felt like. It felt like this YouTube Rewind 2012 was a celebration of YouTube culture from YouTube, by YouTube, about YouTube. It was nice. So the next year's YouTube Rewind took that exact formula and just repeated it. And it worked, it worked really well. What was a popular music video for that year? What does the fox say? Let's have loads of different YouTubers recreate that music video and then also remix in all the other popular music videos from that year. It was great, everyone enjoyed it. I liked being able to be like, oh, I know that YouTuber and oh, I get that YouTube reference. Is that kid present? There was so much melding in and it was a really good job of marrying everything that we all enjoyed about the platform. It felt like a celebration of us. It was great. Now the 2014 YouTube Rewind, personally, I think that was the best one. And that might just be because I'm in it. If you didn't know that, hey, look at me. I got a YouTube Rewind, which is nice because like 2014 was the first year that YouTube was a big, big, big thing for me. Like that was when I decided to go YouTube full time and I started making videos every single week, no matter what. And it was nice to be recognized. It was an honor back then to be allowed to be in YouTube Rewind. Like this is so special. I remember sharing that on every social media. Like this is crazy. I'm in an official YouTube video. Uh, this is so cool. Now it's not only because I was in it that I think it was the best one. I just think it hit every single sweet spot that a video needed to hit. It starts off right off the bat, perfect. Who's the number one YouTuber on the platform that just recently took the crown? PewDiePie. He starts it off, grabs the rewind button, jumps in, and then it's just immediate going to different scenes from popular music videos from that year. The music was banging it, it like goes back and forth and remixing in between things. I mean, I'm trying to like grab a play button from Dan Howell, and he never gave me that play button, you know? Still, still trying to get that. But yeah, it was a great, great music video. <laughs> Also, 2014's YouTube Rewind saw a lot more representation from other aspects of the YouTube community. In the classroom scene alone, I know there was British YouTubers, French YouTubers, German YouTubers, like it was nice that there was now a lot more people except for the standard American vloggers that are in every single year. Now, 2015 is the last year I'd say it was still like good. It might not have been as good as 2014, but it was still pretty darn good and I very much enjoyed it. It also saw a lot more representation with loads of other YouTubers that do not speak English as a primary language represented. And they did a good job with it. It fit really naturally. They had like the Shia LaBeouf buff meme as people go and do it, except in all the different languages. And it flowed really well with the song. Everything was great. There was no breaks. Perfect. Good job, guys. There's nothing I got to say negative about that. And then we get to 2016. So far up until this point, YouTube Rewind still feels like this great celebration of all the things that YouTube is and what's made YouTube, who was made on YouTube, and everything YouTube. And then we start 2016 off with The Rock. It's a bit confusing because we're like, it's, it's not, I don't know that YouTuber. Is, is, is Dwayne, Dwayne Johnson a YouTuber? Is that, even if he was, he didn't, he's not from YouTube. This is like just using the platform possibly. I actually don't know what his reference was. What, what's going on? Why is it starting with that? It's not starting with a YouTuber. So it starts you off on the wrong foot already. Then it starts off with Stranger Things. Stranger Things? I began to ask when I watched this. Did I miss a huge amount of Stranger Things content on the platform? Or is YouTube Rewind promoting a competitor, Netflix. Is this Netflix Rewind? I don't think so, Dan and Phil dressing up as kids from Saints and Things. Uh, you can't just do that. When usually in the past, you know, you have creators dressing up as viral videos from YouTube, not creators dressing up as popular things on the internet, like Stranger Things. 
it doesn't really fit. You know, like I said, it's not Netflix Rewind. It's, it's supposed to be YouTube Rewind. So this is where you start to see YouTube start to switch the tone from let's celebrate YouTube culture and this little niche and community that we have and start celebrating a bit more outside of that culture. The most confusing of those in 2016 was damn Daniel's inclusion. What? Daniel? The famous Vine? Another competitor? This is not Vine Rewind. If it was, it'd be alive still. Okay, Vine's dead, sad, okay? However, why is damn Daniel in a YouTube Rewind? I know there's YouTube like Vine compilation videos. I get it, I've been there, but that's not something from YouTube, okay? YouTube Rewind. I don't know how to say this any stronger than I already am, okay? It's just felt weird to have these things that weren't about YouTube in YouTube Rewind, you know? Am I wrong here? That's that's where I started to get this weird vibe, okay? Like I said, I'm not alone here. This is all in our minds subtly as we're watching this. If we're big in the YouTube community, if we enjoy the YouTube community, this is when we went, something feels off. And then we got into 2017, and this is where we had a quite stark drop in everyone enjoying the YouTube Rewind. Like 2016, YouTube was like, ooh, maybe we'll talk about things that aren't on YouTube and just all around in pop culture. 2017, they were like, that is all we're gonna do. Let's start off with Stephen Colbert. I love Colbert. Colbert Report used to watch it all the time as a teen. It's not, it's, it doesn't matter that he puts these videos on YouTube. He, he's not a YouTuber. This isn't YouTube culture. He's repurposing the platform. He's using the platform to promote his other things. Now you might think I have an issue with showcasing fidget spinners as a big thing, but I don't because fidget spinners not only were a big thing in pop culture, but blew up on YouTube. Every freaking vlogger had to be like, fidget spinner, top 10 tricks, and all that type of thing. So I think that was really well done and funny and well integrated. However, what got really weird was when you have a lovely happy-go-lucky video with little remixes and references to fun videos throughout the year, and then, oh, by the way, remember terrorism exists? Yeah, I do now. Thanks for the tone shift. Who, who, who wanted that? That's just so confusing. Imagine watching like your favorite cooking YouTuber. You watch him binge with Babish. He's like breaking some celery, and then he like has this weird moment, turns to the camera and goes, by the way, do you know that school shootings exist? Anyway, two teaspoons of sugar. What? You can't just do that. You can't just change the shift with me. You can't change the tone like that. It, it, it throws everyone off. It's not called News Rewind 2017. It's called YouTube Rewind. Uh, I expect, is this Trump gonna be in the next one? Like, that's why it was so confusing. Like, how did terrorism and us getting through it have to do with that year? It just felt like such an odd choice of an inclusion. And then to end 2017 YouTube Rewind with a bang, the Pauls Brothers. Now, I gotta be honest. The Pauls Brothers, they blew up that year. Did they deserve to have a cameo maybe? Sure. Did they deserve to be one of the biggest roles in YouTube Rewind? No. Why? Well, of course, they were literally all over the media at this point in time for negative publicity. They were only in the news for negativity. It was all really, really bad stuff. So it was very confusing that YouTube on one hand would be like, PewDiePie, oh no, number one credit on the platform that's, you know, basically representing us. No, 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 no. Paul brothers dab on each other, throw some slime. <laughs> the inclusion of those brothers in this video, it was appalling. And now the moment we've been waiting for, okay? You've been on this journey with me from 2011 all the way to 2017. It is now time for the 2018 Rewind. This is where YouTube went so far off the tracks, they just took everything bad about the previous two years and then multiplied it to infinity. What do we start with? One, Will Smith turns to camera. Ah, I'm gonna be honest. Why? Why is that? This is like the third one in a row where it starts with someone that is not a YouTuber, has not come from YouTube. It's cool that he's doing YouTube now. I'm gonna say that. that that's pretty good. Good job, Will. However, yet again, with every other previous person, like I said, they're using this platform to promote themselves and their brand. They're not from it. They didn't come from YouTube. They are just using it. And that's what makes this really uh, annoying. Also, what does Will Smith want from Rewind? Yeah, if I control Rewind, I would want Fortnite and Marquez Brownlee. Fortnite and Marquise Brownlee. Okay, well, gonna be honest, I love Marquise Brownlee. I watch his tech videos all the time. Yeah, also Fortnite, I freaking love Fortnite. Played all the time, 1v1 me, you'll win. I'm still really bad, but I love Fortnite. I watch it all the time. Is it weird that Will Smith wanted Fortnite and Marquise Brownlee then? Yes, would it be weird if I did it? No, or if any other YouTuber did it? No, because that would make sense. These are things that were popular and it would be cool for them to say it. But Will Smith saying it is out of place. That's not normal. He wouldn't have said that. That's completely weird. That is now a, an official quote from Will Smith now. <laughs> I just want Marquise probably in Fortnite. It, why? <laughs> <laughs> but okay, let's focus on that. We just start off, we jump in the battle bus. I love Fortnite as much as the other guy, but there's no reason for the entire rewind to be focused about it, because guess what? Fortnite 
isn't a YouTube thing. It's a game. I think the references are good. Keep throwing them in, but don't make the whole thing about it. Also, look at that battle bus. What a happy little battle bus. Who's driving in the train? Who's driving that bus? Tyler Blevins, Ninja, who's that? He's a big popular Fortnite player on what? Mm, Twitch. He's the number one most followed person and subscribed person on the rival platform. Ah, yes, he's got 20 million followers on YouTube. Congratulations, he's a big YouTuber in his own right, but he just repurposes the content from Twitch on his YouTube channel. Full disclosure, I literally watch every single YouTube video that Ninja uploads on his channel, but they're highlights, they're single games. It's from his Twitch channel. He's in the Twitch community, not the YouTube community. He's just kind of here as a subsidiary of the Twitch. It just feels odd. You know who else was on that battle bus? Nick A30. You might not have noticed him because he didn't have any words. He's literally the most popular streamer on YouTube. The platform The Rewind is about no words. Ninja though, number one on Twitch, give him all the lands. You then begin to see why things feel so weird about this rewind because everyone is saying things that are very out of character. Will Smith wanting Fortnite. Casey Neistat wanting K-pop. There's one thing this video needs. K-pop! <laughs> Casey Neistat doesn't want K-pop. No one wants K-pop. K-pop does nothing to do with YouTube at all. In fact, the K-pop community is disjoint from the YouTube community. You can have some crossover, sure, but they're different, okay? This isn't K-pop Rewind, or otherwise we'd just be playing the same BTS songs back and forth and listen to the first time again. I'm done. Love the little bongo cat inclusion in YouTube Rewind. He's my favorite Twitter meme? I've seen a lot of other people complain about talk show hosts being in this YouTube Rewind doing Fortnite dances. Absolutely not. I think that's great. They were in it for a very quick bit. They did a little dance. They kind of married the two ideas of talk show hosts and Fortnite being popular. Done. That's it. They didn't have any lines. They didn't do anything else. That was fine. I think that's a great inclusion. Nothing negative there. However, what made this episode of YouTube Rewind so, so awful was it was 80% talking. Where was the music? It's supposed to be cool music, you know, remixes of the top songs. At any point, it was mostly unrecognizable songs, and when they were recognizable, they'd cut them off to be like, guys, let's give it up for single moms and people who taught this year. How tone deaf? What, what are you, why? This sounds like if someone at YouTube corporate offices were like, guys, we want to target this like social justice warrior audience, but we don't want to be too controversial. How about, uh, Let's give it up for stopping racism. Yeah, that, that's good. No one's good. Single mothers? I saw that on a Facebook post the other day from a 45-year-old teacher from Oklahoma. I like that. Throw it in. Like, who, who are they pandering to? You see, if YouTube was actually clued in and listening to their community, they wouldn't have all this stuff from all over the internet. We've been talking about this for ages that YouTube Rewind felt like it was our thing for YouTube. We wouldn't have all this crazy Vine stuff or people from Twitch. What we would have was, I don't know, the KSI Logan Paul fight was a really huge thing this year. That wasn't referenced at all. PewDiePie, the top YouTuber on the platform, having this battle with T-Series, that seems to be pretty big. I know it's a bit late in the year when that happened, but still, he isn't in it at all, and it just, how are those two things like not in it at all? There's so many other references about YouTube, big things that happened that are just completely missed because, I don't know, it's not even that it's not PC enough or anything. I don't know. It's just that YouTube is trying to appeal to everyone and yet no one at the same time. That's why the 2018 YouTube Rewind is so universally hated. You just know without even having to watch any of the previous stuff that the intended audience for this is all over the place and nowhere at the same time. It feels like a vegan YouTuber cooking channel cooking with meat because they were paid a lot of money to do it and they're like, hey guys, I love using beef in this recipe. Give me the money, John. Anyway, thanks for watching. Who, who are you? It's not authentic. You know what's great about YouTube and YouTubers? Authenticity. People who speak their minds and don't shy away because it's not popular to say certain things. That was the complete opposite of this. It was basically say whatever everyone appreciates, such as single moms are great. Uh, everyone who did something and made themselves bigger this year, good job you. Also, let's just have everyone who speaks different languages just start speaking randomly. No, that didn't fit. I love languages, man. Freaking go learn some new languages on Duolingo. Don't just randomly get people around a bonfire to just spout random stuff in different languages. That doesn't bring togetherness. What brings togetherness is dancing and music and singing along, even if it's in different languages. That's great. Not just talking, come on. It's like show, not tell, okay? I'm telling you, this is a bad episode of YouTube Rewind. It was, it was really bad. And normally I'd be like, what's your opinion? But I mean, I've seen the dislikes. I'm assuming everyone's on board with me. But I do have a question. What is your theory? Do you have a specific theory on why this was so bad? Because in my head, it genuinely is just because YouTube tried to pander to everyone outside of the pop culture references and basically not talk about YouTube anymore. And instead of being a celebration of YouTube, it's now just, hey, internet things, rewind. But it's on YouTube. That's me. That's, that's my thoughts.
Let me hear yours in the comments. Appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up if you like it when I rant angrily to camera. It seems to be what I'm doing recently here. And if you do like it, you can subscribe because I make new videos every Sunday. I found out 80% of the people who watch my videos don't even subscribe. Blows my mind. All right, I'm off to a Christmas YouTube party. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next Sunday. Goodbye. Ah <laughs>